Fifty years ago, a group of young doctors and nurses drove from the United Kingdom to Nepal, a country desperately short of medics. The health services they helped set up have saved millions of lives since, reports the BBC's Bagrat Yodi. In three donated Land Rovers laden with equipment, the 1-1 Strong Team lived in early April 1968 through Europe they drove to Istanbul and then crossed here on and Afghanistan, reaching Pakistan via the Khyber Pass. Before continuing to Delhi, such a journey would be unthinkable these days for security reasons. But they did it in about seven weeks. And by the end of May they had reached Nepal's capital, Kathmandu. The overland route the group chose was cheaper than going by sea and road, which would have been no quicker. In Nepal, they set up an anti-tuberculosis program, trained health workers and immunized children. It was not just local lives that were changed. Several of the group ended up marrying each other in the Himalayan kingdom. The idea for the trip had come two years earlier. John Cunningham, a doctor at Street Thomas Hospital in London, wanted a challenge and found that Nepal had just 200 doctors for 11 million people. A positive reply to a letter to the Nepalese government enthused him on day 1967 he registered a charity called the Britain Nepal Medical Trust, bombed. John was a consummate organizer and recruiter. Recalls Dive Barney Rosedale, a member of the expedition. By early 1968, those OPGANISING powers had a rather miracle. In fact, several miracles. Mountains of donated equipment and medicines had been sorted and packed for shipping to Calcutta. Among those on the team was Nurse Prue Hunt, the daughter of John Hunt, who led the first expedition to the summit of Mount Everest in 1953. The youngest member was handyman Peter Hawksworth. 19. We had two other Land Rovers, a full team, and John had visited Kathmandu for preliminary discussions with the government. There was much debate about where we should go, says Dive Rosedale. First, they went to Kathmandu, a couple of hours from the capital. They went to a rush stop at a river crossing and washed the vehicles and themselves. Suits, ties and dresses were donned. And at 4 p.m. on 28 May 1968, looking bizarrely smart after seven weeks on the road. The team drove into the British Embassy in an early monsoon rainstorm. We spent a couple of months in the capital, finding our way around, making many friends and contacts. Drive Rosedale says, we learned the poly from a peace call shooter. It was confirmed they would be working in the east, in Biratnagar. In those days the town was much smaller than now. Surrounded by expanses of flat rice and dirt fields with slow shallow rivers and many bullet carts, the team settled in and soon established a new children's ward at Pirat Nagar's own hospital under Drive Baratrong's body. A program of nurse training followed, along with more surgery and, later, a large, new outpatients building with a modern pathology lab upstairs. In nearby hills, the town of Dankuta, with its one doctor and small hospital, was next to receive help, with a host of porters carrying their surgical equipment. Some of the team were met on the way by the husband of a woman, seriously ill in long obstructed labor. That evening, they performed a cancer insection on her in the hospital. Mother and baby boy survived and thrived. And the chief district officer, whose wife it was, was impressed. A good omen for our career in the hills. Drive Rosedale says, our first TB clinic was in an old house nearby, near the hospital, with a consulting treatment room downstairs and laboratory. A sputum staining upstairs, 
the waiting area on the steps outside. TB drugs were supplied by UNICEF. It was soon clear that TB was a major disease in the Nepal's hills, far commoner and more deadly than leprosy, which the team also diagnosed and treated. It was also clear that although treatment was vital, prevention on a huge scale would be better than you. So the team organized and started a board program, both in districts where the doctors and nurses could visit by Land Rover, a motorbike, and in the hills entirely on foot. First, a motivator would be sent a few weeks ahead to explain the program to the elders of the villages and tour and times and places. Then the doctors would arrive, vaccinate, give some health education and move on to the next village, sleeping in village houses. In the first four seasons of the program they vaccinated about half a million children in Koshi Zone, and much of Maggie's own tour, and also put forward a plan for a national vaccination program. In those early days, we had the support of Oxfam and individual donors who loved the poll. But we were always short of money, Drive Rosedale says. Even before TB clinics were established in many further hill towns, the lack of reliable, in date, and affordable medicines became a clear problem. The Hill Drug Scheme, devised by Drive Rosedale, to ensure a supply of Carefully selected vital drugs at a controlled cost to strategic points was gradually unfolded to 20 distribution centers, with its own accounting and portering systems. The scheme evolved and expanded to meet a far wider need over the decades. According to Drive Rosedale, much of the ethos and tradition of the trust was formed in those early days, involving a small team that was egalitarian, secular and non-missionary. Key principles were working alongside the government services, managing on a small budget, and using local resources. This, he says, made the team flexible enough to tackle a cholera outbreak in 1971 and assist at an eye camp in the hills, and establish a service which has kept evolving to this day. In March 20th, A.T. and Julian Kelly and Rosemary Ball, two of the nurses back in 1968, visited the hospital at Birat Nagar along with Peter Hawksworth, the team's handyman. So how have things changed over the last five decades? Julian says Koshi's own hospital is almost unrecognizable. The old compound was packed with buildings containing all the Departments of a teaching hospital, the medical superintendent, Drive Russian Potter L, told us there were 345 beds, including a 100 bed maternity wing, and a 21 to 45 bedded children's ward, three theaters with purpose built scrub and sterilization rooms, had replaced the one small theater where I worked, she owed the BBC. The young British doctors and nurses were among just a handful of foreign medics assisting the poor. When they arrived in 1968, the country is still very poor, but this days it has more than 21. 000 doctors for a population which has grown to 29 million, and TB is still a major health problem, but treatment coverage is now 70%. According to the World Health Organization, our expedition changed a good many links, including our own. And best of all, we have come to share increasingly the mantle of this work with our Nepali brothers and sisters. To the benefit of a country we have all come to love, says Driver Rosedale. The United States military says it has killed 62 fighters from the Islamist. Group Al-Shabaq being six air strikes in Somalia. Four air strikes on Saturday killed 32 militants, and a further two on Sunday killed 28. It said in a statement, "This were the deadliest air attacks in Somalia since November 2017, when 
the United States said it had killed 100 militants. Somalia has seen a sharp increase in the number of air strikes and casualties since President Donald Trump took office in the United States in January 2017. A tally by the Bureau of Investigative Journalism reveals that at least 400 people have been killed in air strikes since the beginning of 2017, far more than the previous 10 years combined. The latest strikes bring to at least 40 the number carried out in Somalia so far this year, compared with 35 recorded in 2017.